Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Dr. Paul. You believe we're still working on Noah's copy of Superman number nine? Now, I've had to do some of the work off camera because with my move, I just had too much going on and I didn't have time to video everything. And I certainly wasn't going to let Noah's book go 60 days untouched. So I've done some work off camera, but right now I'm deacidifying the inner wraps. So this is the fourth wrap. And what you'll note is that we have a couple of things going on here. This is my Holly text, and I think I'll remove it just for this conversation real quick. Make it a little bit more clear what we're trying to do. So you'll note a few things about these inner wraps. One, they already have some tape on them. No and I discussed this. These would need to be leaf cast if we were to remove this tape. It's a lot of work that he wasn't really in for, and I don't blame him. It seems to be archival tape. It's pretty stable. It doesn't look like it's degrading the paper, so easy enough to leave well enough alone there. Most of the pages have rips in them. You'll note there's a rip right here. It goes up to there. There's a similar rip over here. It's a little bit smaller. There's also some mold. And overall, the paper's nice. Pretty clearly off-white to me. But it is, it could be brightened a little bit, and the pages could stand to be deacidified. So, what we're doing today is we're doing a deacidification, and we're going to mend these rips. Some of these inner wraps had up to five or six places that I had to mend. So, this one with only two is actually pretty straightforward, relatively simple. So, what are we deacidifying with? My handy solution of calcium hydroxide. This is the semi-saturated, so we, we've talked about how to manufacture this before, but basically you create for yourself a saturated solution of calcium hydroxide, and then you water it down one to four. Pretty straightforward. The other thing that we are dealing with here is this is a pretty severe crease. This book has obviously been apart before evidence that there's tape on both sides of these wraps. And whoever put it back together put a pretty severe crease in it. Uh, this is not a natural crease for this book. It should be more rounded, especially these early golden age that have, it's a thick book. That should be a more rounded wrap. So one of the things that I need to make take extra precaution with is getting this flat. See, it doesn't even want to set flat. We have to get it flat so that we can mend it and deacidify it. So how do we do that? Well, I found a few ways that work reasonably well. So this is Holitex. This is non-woven. polyester, similar to Ramey. Holitex has just a bit of a smoother texture. It's a little bit better for leaf casting than Ramey because of that smooth texture, if you want smooth texture on your paper, that is. I bumped the camera a little bit there, so just had to write things. So as I was saying, if you want smooth Paper texture, when you leaf cast, this holly text is preferred over Rame. That said, we're not leaf casting here. Rame would work just as well for this as the holly text. So what I've done, what I found works quite well, is we place these so that the leaf is face down this way. And I hold it as flat as I can when I wet it. 
and that seems to help get this flat. So I'm going to start right here. We've talked about this before, but it's worth repeating. Safety is important. This calcium hydroxide is a base, but it's a very dilute base. And it is perfectly safe for me to use without gloves. I tend to actually be a fairly cautious person. I'm not a big risk taker. I take calculated risks maybe, but I don't generally go in for the thrill of the risk or anything like that. It isn't something that I enjoy. So I would be wearing safety protective equipment if I, if it was necessary. In this instance, it is not. So that's how I hold it. Again, that's critical, that, that tiny little step. Those are the little differences between great results and so-so results. So holding it flat while I wet it, and even holding it flat here while the paper becomes saturated will help you be successful with this mending. Now, these rips are going to be very difficult to see when this paper is completely saturated. So we know we have one right here. And the other rip is right here. So I'm just going to make note of where those are because later it's going to be quite difficult to see that. And I am going to be flipping this paper over. That's going to not make it easy either. So I'm going to go ahead and now spray a little bit through the Holitex. Holitex is quite wettable. You'll see it pulls this aqueous solution in quite nicely. Um, sometimes when it's fresh, I don't know if as part of the manufacturing process they use some kind of coating that makes it initially not super wettable. Sometimes when I first cut a piece of Holitex, from the roll, I buy it in a big roll, long roll, I guess I should say. It's not big, but it is long. Um, it's a little bit not wet initially, not wettable initially. Okay, so you'll see now we're getting the result we want. This is the look we want here where the paper looks quite dark and it's become translucent. This look here is paper that has not yet become wet. So the way we can speed this up is we can flip this over. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the bottom Holitex layer. And I'm going to flip the whole page. So it's dry underneath here. Damn it. Hit my camera again. Not used to where it is in the new studio. So you can see the paper, because it has sizing on it, is not super wettable. So we want to help it along by flipping it over and exposing it to this aqueous solution from both sides. Again, I'm going to reinforce that I'm keeping this very flat. If it starts to develop even a slightest ripple, I'm going to very gently flatten it 
push air bubbles out. That's going to help get the aqueous solution to the surface of the paper. Remember right now, I am not touching the paper, right? We have Holytex over the paper. I'm rubbing on the Holytex. Now, I'm not saying you could never do this to paper because you can, but I am saying if you ever are touching paper raw directly, you need to take a lot of caution, right? Exercise a lot of caution because wet paper is weak paper and that's when you, if you are not super careful, that's when you can have a mistake. All right, now we see that we're getting closer to having all the paper be dark and translucent. We're not quite there yet, but we're getting closer, right? And the Holytex, like I mentioned, is very wettable. So it is holding that water, that aqueous solution on top of the page for us quite nicely. So what I like to do here is I like to let this set for a few minutes, not long, because I don't want any aqueous, any inks that are slightly soluble in an aqueous solution to start running. So what I'm talking about here is five to 10 minutes. So we're going to take a five to 10 minute break, let this saturate, and then we'll come back and show you the mending process and how I prep for the mending. Okay, we've had about five minutes elapse, and you can see now we have nice dark paper that is mostly translucent. I'm going to actually start pushing a little bit harder when I do this because I want to start driving the water out of the paper now. One of the things about aqueous bath is generally, not always, but generally, you want to get it wet, and then once it's fully saturated, you want to dry it off pretty quickly. Again, some of these, some of the inks are not like a monolithic chemical. Inks have, they're a mixture of many different kinds of chemicals, and some of those chemicals are water soluble and will start to run. And the less time you have it in water, less likely that is to happen, less bleed you'll get. So paper's nice now, the way I want it. Remember this, this is sort of the inner part of this leaf, right? Because it was folded that way, we flattened it that way, but then we flipped it. So sometimes it matters where you do your mending. In this particular case, because these are gonna be obvious no matter how you're looking at the pages, it won't matter. So I'm not gonna to have to flip this page back over. What I am gonna do now is I'm gonna start drying it off. So I want this paper to be saturated, but not like sopping wet when I do this mending. Okay, so initially, I'm just gonna do exactly what you see me doing here. I'm just gonna push a lot of water out. This is completely saturated now. It's sort of, you can tell it's sort of stopping. These are paper towels that I'm reusing. These are towels that I used for blotting of whole pages, which you'll see later in this process. Then I dry them out and then I use them again for this process. Now, how do I know that it's dry enough not too dry you may be asking yourself and I'm about to answer that question even if you weren't asking yourself that as I do this process I'm looking at the paper remember how we got it nice and translucent and right now you'll note that the holly text is more or less invisible. It's also kind of 
translucent. As I dry this surface, we'll start to see the Holitex. I'm gonna to try to give you a good example of it right here. See that? This is how I want it to look when I'm ready to mend it. So I'm gonna get that look over this entire page because I just have two places where I need to mend and then this book's been deacidified now. Remember the reason why we use the calcium hydroxide is because we're actually attempting to leave what they call an alkaline reserve in the paper. Why are we doing that? Paper is autocatalytic. It will destroy itself by acid hydrosis. What that means is as the paper ages, it breaks down, produces an acid. That acid then makes the environment more acidic and that more acidic environment actually accelerates the next round of acid hydrosis. And that process can spiral out of control if we don't have an alkaline reserve. When we have an alkaline reserve, that is to say the leftover calcium hydroxide that we're leaving in the paper, when that process starts, a little bit of acid is produced, and then that acid is almost immediately neutralized by the alkaline reserve that we left in the paper. And then that process of the paper breaking down is arrested right there. So that's why we do that. This is an archival technique. All right, I have here some Tengujo paper. That little bit's probably not gonna really help us much. There's our rip. One of our two rips right there. Just barely see it. That's why I said make a good mental note of it or even take a picture before you wet your paper because it can be quite difficult to see. All right, and then I'm going to tear this Tengujo paper. After I tear it, I like to flatten it and make sure that I don't have any areas that are bunched up. I'm going to set it right there. I'm just going to tap it down. And because we have our paper relatively dry, you can still see it there. Now I have my methyl cellulose. This is just mixed up per the manufacturer's recommendation. I use the Lineco archival quality, pure methyl cellulose with a neutral pH. There is an Amazon affiliate link in the video description. If you're gonna buy some, I'd appreciate you using it. It supports the channel. As a matter of fact, you can buy anything from Amazon. You can follow that link and then buy anything there. It'll help me out a little bit. I get like a dime if you spend $100, but every little bit counts. Every little bit helps. Okay, so what do I have? I have a number five. Brush. And as you've seen me before, I like to start right in the middle and I brush toward the edges of the Tengujo paper. I like to get all those fibers laying down nice and flat. So I always go away from the center of my tear and feather that outward. Okay, now I'm using incident light, which means I'm putting my face over here and my light source is here so that I can see the reflection like this. And I'm making sure that I don't have any pooled methyl cellulose. So because we dried the paper off, the paper towels. The paper is actually just absorbent enough that it will absorb this methyl cellulose 
and I don't have any, and I don't have any standing methyl cellulose. It looks nice and dry. I'm going to just dry brush this area right here, which is just a tiny bit wet. And that side's done. I could put this right down on that. I'm going to, just because we're still going to work on this page, I'm going to leave it up and just allow that to, I want that methyl cellulose to be sucked down into the page rather than sucked up into the holly text. So I'm going to leave the holly text out of the way for just a little while while we work on the other side here. And I'm going to peel this back just enough to reveal our tear on this side. You can see it's right there. And I'm going to get myself another small repair piece of Tengujo. That's plenty on this side. I'm going to try to rip this, though, so that I leave myself another piece that maybe I can use somewhere else. So let's see if that's enough. That actually is enough. So I'm going to rip it like this and leave myself two usable pieces of Tengujo. This one that I'm going to use later on a project probably on the next wrap, frankly, because all these wraps are torn in the same spots. The whole book was torn through. Okay, so I'll just gently place it and again, because the paper's a little bit dry, I can still see where the Tengujo is. I'm gonna start right on the rip, the application of the methyl cellulose. And work my way outward, fanning and getting those fibers of the Tengujo paper flat and spread out increasing the surface area so that I increase the amount of strengthening that that Tengujo paper gives to this mend. All right, that looks good. So now I'm just gonna do a little bit of dry brushing to help get the methyl cellulose down into our page, into the Tengujo. There we go. And I'm gonna leave it like this just a minute or two. Okay, so I've just given it a couple of minutes. I'm going to put these Holytex layers back down. I pull it a little bit just to give it a little tension. And I flatten it like this. Because I don't want that ripple to somehow translate into a sort of a crinkle in the comic. I don't think it will. This Holytex is very fine, but just something I put a little energy into. Right, now we're going to start the drying process for this page. So for the initial dry, I'm just going to put paper towels on top. Again, these are ones that have been used once already. And I just dry them out and I reuse them a few times. I'm going to try to center this left and right, top and bottom. These golden age pages are large, larger even than the later golden age. 
And so the piece of granite that I have just covers them. And you've seen this before. It's just a piece of granite that was left over from a kitchen remodel that I cut and polished. And it works pretty well for this and it didn't cost me anything. Okay, so these early Golden Age books, this of course is from 1941, pre-war. These books have a total of 16 inner wraps plus the cover that makes up 68 total pages front, back, and folded once. So this is wrap number four. I've got about a dozen more to do. And the process from here, I'll change these paper towels out about every 20 minutes for the next hour to hour and a half. And then I'll press this page, just cold press it between some Bristol paper with the rest of the pages until I get them all done. And then we'll start the reassembly process. So I want to thank everybody that's along for the ride. I know we took quite a break. I appreciate all of the well wishes for my move. The move is behind me now, but it took a lot of energy to move my home and my studio. And I have a lot of other hobbies. So I have a lot of other stuff that I had to move. I do appreciate everybody sticking with me here. I appreciate all the well wishing on the move. And we're going to get this book back to Noah relatively soon. And we're going to be starting on some new projects. So, so I appreciate your patience as we wrap this one up. Again, if you want to use any of these materials, there is an affiliate link below where I list out the materials that I use for these projects. Please do so. If you just want to generally support me, you can do your regular Amazon shopping through any of those links as well. And until next time, Take care of one another.